Scene. Rooftop of an apartment building covered with jars of multicolored flowers in various states of decay. It is about 5 a.m., and so it is too dark for the flowers to be seen. At rise, Aurelia around, arranges some yellow roses and delphinium in a glass jar. She sets, she sets the arrangement down among the other jars and sits serenely in the middle of the roof, watching her breath in the cold air. Barney climbs to the roof on rickety metal stairs, which make loud clanking noises. He breathes heavily. Hey, you! Miss? Aurelia does not turn around. This is the second time you woke me up with your clanking. <laughs> Hello? Aurelia still does not turn around. So, like, what on earth are you doing up on the roof at 5 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Thinking. Barney pauses, waiting for further explanation. <laughs> thinking. So, well, I'll be thinking on the roof. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, why, why can't you think in your own apartment instead of waking up half the block? Oh, you know, I, I was thinking about getting a good night's sleep before you came galumping up the steps right by my window, two mornings in a row. And you, you know what I said to myself? I said, um, yesterday morning I said, no use bothering my neighbors, no. They'll have enough decent human courtesy to fix the problem themselves. Oh, but no, first thing this morning I hear huge tramping footsteps up the stairs. I'm very sorry if I've disturbed you, but this is the only place I can think clearly. If, if, uh, young lady, I think I have made it very clear that you have very much disturbed me. Aurelia does not respond. He paces, still incredulous at this odd behavior. Thinking. Yeah. And uh, uh, what, may I ask, are you thinking about that requires such intense concentration? People. Victims, huh? People. I think about people. What people? The people I watch. I watch and listen, and then I think about it. The people you watch. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> All right, that's it, that's it. She's, she's, she's bonkers, totally bonkers. All right, I'm going to go back to my apartment, and if I hear you again tomorrow, I'll call the police to deal with you. That's what it is, because I am not... As Barney talks, he backs away, not noticing that he is nearing the jars of flowers. He knocks over the jar of yellow roses and delphinium ah, with his foot. Horse, Aurelia horse. Hears, hears the jar break and comes over to investigate. Horse feathers, what an... What an they're, they're my flowers. Oh, I see, I'm sorry, I couldn't see them in the dark. Yellow roses and delphidium. Barney sees the flowers clearly for the first time and looks shaken. Yellow roses, yellow roses. Look, I said I'm sorry. I can't even believe I'm apologizing. You know that they're half dead anyway. And what are they doing on the roof? I get them from the flower shop. I work there. I know. I've seen you. That still doesn't explain I why I sweep the leftovers up at the end of the day and bring them home. Yeah, and the roof? They help me think. They help, they help you think. Jeez Louise. <laughs> OK, the dead flowers help you think about the people that you watch. At the flower shop, yes. Yeah. How? The flowers are people. Each one reminds me of a different person, a conversation, a story. Like these zinnias, Mrs. Robert brings them to her mother every Saturday, and this is Tom Lee. He works in the bakery around the corner. He brought these the first day all the snow melted. I bring them here to preserve and to reflect and to remember. There is a long pause as Barney considers what she has said. So the, the flowers that I, that I knocked over. They're your... Yeah, I knocked over. I know. Yellow roses and delphinium. I helped choose them my, myself, you know, for goodness sake. I met her once, a few weeks ago. It was late, about 7 o'clock. 
The shop was already closed, but she'd come by to pick up some bouquets she'd ordered, yellow roses and delphinium. She apologized for coming so late and, and offered to help me close up the shop. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Look, yeah, I really just, I want to get back to bed. Can you just give me your word that you won't come up here again? Because it's a nuisance for me and it's a nuisance for the whole neighborhood. I would, but you don't mean it. What do you mean I don't mean it? I think I've made it perfectly clear that I mean every word of it. Holy cow, how much clearer do you want me to be? You're driving me bonkers with your incessant clanging up the stairs at five in the morning. No, you don't mean it. I do, do mean it. I mean every single word you that- You can't. You see, you've been, I've been coming up here ever since I lived here for at least a year, but it only bothered you today. Who cares when it started bothering me? I just care that it does bother me, and I'd like it fixed one way or the other. So you can either cooperate with me or I'm calling the police. But it doesn't bother you. Oh. Yeah, well, I think I'll be the judge of that. Look, I'm going inside right now, and if you're still up here at 6, I'm calling the police. Barney starts to leave. I've watched you at the flower shop. Barney turns around. Excuse me. I told you I've seen you at the flower shop, you and your daughter, buying flowers. Talking. Planning. Barney looks like he wants to leave, but can't quite make himself. And? And I heard you talking. You were planning her wedding. She's married now. As Aurelia talks, she goes faster and faster, and Barney grows more and more upset. I think you're alone. I think you're lonely. I was arranging her flowers this morning when you came to tell me to stop, and that's why I said I didn't mean what you said, and, and I... I'm not bothering you, you're just Stop! You know, you have no right. You've got no right to go around telling me how I feel or what I do and why and pretending to understand me better than I understand myself. You just don't. You don't. There's a long pause as Barney calms down and Aurelia looks crumpled. You're right. That's why I need to come up here and think and try to make sense of people who I don't understand and they don't understand me, maybe because they make more sense to me than I do to myself. Look, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry. You're right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You coming up here won't bother me one, <clears throat> no one bit, completely. Slowly, and with much effort and joint creaking, Barney sits on the roof near to Aurelia. Another long pause. So, you know, what, what exactly do you do up here? I arrange the flowers from the day before, gather my thoughts while the flowers are still fresh and the stories fresh in my mind. Then what? I sit, and I think, and I wait for the sun to rise. End of play. <laughs>